every human heart has been hardwired to be gripped by the greatness of someone or something that they center their life around, which forms their identity, their sense of meaning and purpose and joy, and to which they are devoted. Every human heart has been hardwired to be gripped by greatness. When I was 12 years old, I was gripped by the greatness of classical music. I've been playing violin for about two years, but I hadn't got past Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And then I went to this music at Steadford and I saw this other kid, Kaliki Squinton, and she was playing Vivaldi's Concerto in A minor. Now, if you've ever heard that, it's an amazing piece of music. And my heart was gripped by classical music and my whole identity became now becoming a classical musician and my meaning, my purpose and joy was found in pursuing classical music. And I was devoted to it. Every Saturday, just as a 12-year-old, I would go into my room and I would take out my violin and I would practice for hours on end. Well, when I was 14, my heart moved on. I became gripped by soccer. I got into the school soccer team. And now my identity was built around soccer. My meaning, my purpose, my joy was found in playing soccer. And I was devoted to soccer. After school, I would chuck down my bag and I would go out and I'd play soccer. Uh, When I came to church, I'd bring a soccer ball to church and convince some of the kids to come out and play with me. Always younger kids. I only play against people I can beat. You should know that by now. I would stay up on Monday night, late into the night, watching the Premier League, the English League of Soccer, because my heart had been gripped by the greatness of soccer. Well, when I was 16, I met a young lady called Tegan, and my heart was gripped again (laughs) by the greatness of this young lady. And my identity became shaped about around being her boyfriend and I found my meaning, my purpose, my joy in being her boyfriend, and I was devoted to her for a time. You see, every human heart has been hardwired to be gripped by the greatness of something or someone around which you center your life, you find your identity, your purpose, your meaning, your joy in that purpose or thing, and you're devoted to it. And every single heart in this place tonight, your heart is being gripped by the greatness of something. Your identity is built around that thing. You find your joy, your meaning, your purpose through pursuing that thing, and you are devoted to that thing. Now, there is a good reason why our hearts are hardwired to be gripped by greatness. Psalm 145 tells us the reason Psalm 145 is a psalm written by King David. And in Psalm 145, verse 3, I just want to look at this one verse tonight. David says this. He says, great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. You see, the reason why your heart is hardwired to be gripped by greatness is because you were created by God to be gripped by His greatness. You were created in His image to center your life around him, to find your identity in relating to him, to find your meaning, purpose, and joy in pursuing him. And you are created to be devoted to him, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. You are created to be gripped by the greatness of the creator. Now, a few years ago, Tegan and I did a very unique thing. It was seven o'clock, and we decided to switch the television off. And instead of watching TV, we laid out a rug in our backyard and we took all the girls outside and we just laid on that rug in the backyard and we looked up into the sky. Now, the reason that we did this is because my, Hannah, daughter, my daughter Hannah, she had got a telescope for her birthday and so we we're going to check, use the telescope and see if it was any good. It wasn't any good. <laughs> but as we sat there looking up into the night sky... We were gripped for about an hour, just looking up at the stars. And I don't know how you feel when you look up at the stars, but when I look up at the stars, I am filled with a sense of awe. Because as I look out into the universe, I see the greatness of the universe, the awesomeness of the universe. 
But Psalm 19 verse 1 says something. It says that the universe is telling us something. It says that the heavens declare the glory of God. That the heavens are telling us that if you think we're awesome, the creator is so much more awesome. The reason that our hearts are hardwired to be gripped by greatness is because we were created to be gripped by the greatness of the creator. Now, David goes on to write in Psalm 45, verse 3. I love this. He says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I love that. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He isn't just to be praised in a mediocre way or in a half-hearted way or in a 50% way. No, because he is great, he is to be praised in a great way. I wonder when you came in this evening, Did you praise God, giving him the credit that he is due because great is the Lord and he is great to be praised? You see, what David is saying in this verse is that there is a connection between the greatness of God and your worship or your devotion to God. You see, what David is saying is this. It's something very profound. He is saying the passion to live for God comes from being gripped by the greatness of God. Passion to live for God comes from being gripped by the greatness of God. As I've shared with you, my heart was on a search for greatness growing up. I went from classical music to soccer to girls, and then I went back to music again. And I really wanted to be a great, a famous musician. I was gripped by music's greatness. And so I wanted to go to university to study music. And so I auditioned at all these different universities to get into their music program, but I got into none of them. And as a joke, I put down as my fourth preference on my university preference form, I put down kindergarten teaching. And guess what I got? Kindergarten teaching. So my parents, they made me go, and that whole first year of university, I studied kindergarten teaching, and I was depressed, as you would be, (laughs) studying kindergarten teaching. But I wasn't doing what I wanted to do, what was my dream. And my whole identity was at sea. My sense of purpose and meaning and joy had been taken from me. But it was in that year that I came face to face with the greatness of King Jesus. Like many of you growing up here, I'd grown up in a Christian family where I'd heard about Jesus my whole life. I'd heard the stories of what he had done. I knew the gospel that he had died on the cross for me, that he'd been raised from the dead. But my heart had never been gripped by the greatness of who he was. And that 18th year of my life, as I was depressed and thinking about life, I was walking down Queen Street Mall in Brisbane, and I came across a Word bookstore. I went into the Word bookstore, and I was just drawn to this book. It's the life story of Keith Green called No Compromise. And I read that book. I couldn't put it down. And it was through that book that King Jesus made himself known to me. I recognized that he was the sovereign Lord of the universe, that he had died, that he had rose again, and I surrendered my life to him. And I've never been the same since. All I wanna do with my life is serve King Jesus. My whole identity is built around being a servant of Jesus. I have purpose, I have meaning, I have a joy inexpressible, and I wanted to be devoted to King Jesus. From that point on in my life, I picked up the Bible and I just couldn't put it down. I came to church not out of obligation, but because I wanted to be there. You see, here's the thing. The passion to live for God comes from being gripped by the greatness of God. And some of you might be here tonight and you're no longer passionate in your pursuit of God. And it's because your heart is no longer gripped by the greatness of God. You know, all over Australia, churches are dying. They are losing their young people. And many people think that it's because of relevance. We just need to be more relevant as a church and we'll keep our young people. 
Other people think, no, what we need to do is we need to protect our young people. We need to cocoon them in so they'll be protected from the world. But look at what David says in Psalm 145. He says, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Verse six, they shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. You know the people who should be singing the loudest in this church? It's the old people. You see, the reason why young people pick up a passion for God is when they see the the previous generation commending the glorious, wondrous works of God. You see, because the passion to live for God comes from being gripped by the greatness of God, but you can't pass on what you do not possess. Do you possess a heart that is gripped I'm talking about being gripped. I'm talking about being gripped by the greatness of God. Do you possess that type of heart? Or have you forgotten who God is? You know, there is a danger. There is a danger in in, in church life. And the danger is we become so familiar with the things of God that we forget the God who's behind those things. We can come to church every week and we can just get into the ritual and routine. There's three songs and then there's some announcements and Jeff cracks a joke. And then after that, you know, we have the giving and then we have another song and then we have Timon gets up and gets all emotional and cries at the end. And then, you know, then we get up and do the last song. And we can get so used to those things that we can forget that right here tonight, present with us, is the awesome, almighty, triune God. He's here in our midst. God, save us from becoming too familiar with your things that we forget to see who you are. I can take you to pastors, pastors, who have lost their way, who are no longer following God, and that's because they became so familiar with the things of God that they missed the God who's behind those things. But there might be another reason tonight why you're no longer gripped by the greatness of God, and that's because your heart has been gripped by the greatness of something else. Something else has captured your attention and you're centering your life around it, you're finding your identity in it, you're finding your meaning and purpose and joy in it, and it's the thing that you're devoted to. And Jesus says to the church at Ephesus in the book of Revelation, he says, if you have lost your first love, he says, remember the height from which you have fallen and repent and do the things you did at first. So maybe tonight you need to run back to Jesus and you need to confess that something else has gripped your heart, and you need to ask Jesus to give you that love that you once had for him. Because the passion to live for God comes from being gripped by the greatness of God. That is my life message. If there's one message that you can hear from Timon Benson's mouth, it is this. We should live wholehearted, passionate lives for Jesus. He died for us, we should live for him. But where does that passion come from? It comes from being gripped by seeing him. He is awesome, he is mighty, he is loving, he is great, he is gracious, he is kind. He is one who holds everything in his hands. So be gripped by his greatness. Now, David here, he says something so profound about the greatness of God. He says, great is the Lord. Because he's great, greatly to be praised, he is greatly to be praised. And David says, and his greatness is unsearchable. Now, when he says that, he doesn't mean you can't find God's greatness. But he's saying something very profound about the greatness of God. When I was a little boy, 
My brother and I used to go swimming in our dam on the farm. We used to do this thing where we would put our hand up in the air and then we would dive down into the dam to see how deep the dam was. Have you ever done that as a kid? Put up your hand if you've done that. You know, maybe you did it in a swimming pool. We say the word pool in Queensland. It's the right way to say it. And so <laughs> we would dive down and it was freaky at, you know, when you were a kid because at the top all the water was nice and warm but as you dived down into the dam, especially if the dam was full, then the lower parts of the water were quite cool and it seemed like the dam would go on forever. But if you were brave enough, eventually as you dived down, your foot would touch the bottom of the dam. Do you know what David is saying about the greatness of God? He is saying that when you dive in to the greatness of God, you're never ever going to touch the bottom. God's greatness is an infinite greatness. Romans 11 verse 33, Paul says, Oh, the depth of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable are his ways. God's greatness is an infinite greatness. Now, this is good news for you and me. This is really good news. You see, because everything else in creation, it does have a measure of greatness. There is a measure of greatness in music. There is a measure of greatness in sports. There is a measure of greatness in being in love. There is certainly a measure of greatness in eating steak. It is wonderful. But when you dive into the things of creation, you will find that you touch the bottom of their greatness. And if you make created things your ultimate thing and you center your life around it and you make, get your sense of identity from it and you find your meaning and your purpose and your joy in it, then eventually you will come up empty. It won't fill you. And eventually it can be taken from you. Quite easily, just like when I was 18, my meaning, purpose, and joy was taken from me. You see, your girlfriend was not meant to be your God. Your work was not meant to be your God. Your dream was not meant to be your God. God was meant to be your God. We were meant to center our lives around the awesome, unsearchable greatness of God. And forever, we will bask in His greatness for all eternity, we will be discovering the beauty and wonder of who our triune God is as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so the call to become a Christian is the call to return to God your creator. It's the call to come back, to surrender your life to him to acknowledge that he is the great and awesome God of the universe and to center your life around him, making him your sense of identity, your sense of purpose, your sense of meaning, and finding your joy in him. So great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. You know, these songs that were written that you heard tonight came out, I believe, of a time where God the Holy Spirit showed us, through the Word of God, a glimpse of the greatness of Christ. It was a season where we saw the greatness of Jesus. But if we want to remain fresh as a church, we need to continually come back to God the Holy Spirit again and ask him to magnify Christ in our eyes, to show us the greatness of who he is. And maybe there are some people here tonight, you're no longer living a passionate life for God and it's because you've not been gripped by the greatness of God. And maybe you need to repent, you need to surrender your life to Christ again, you need to come back to Jesus, and say, Jesus, I want you to be my all in all. One of the men who made a really big impact on me 
when I was 18 was a, was a guy by the name of Graham Circum, and he always used to say this. He used to say, don't be a 50% Christian. Be 100% Christian, because that's what God desires from us, that every day we deny ourselves, we die to ourselves, we take up our cross, and we follow him, because he is worthy of it. He's so worthy of our devotion and love. So I'm calling you tonight to be gripped by the infinite greatness of God. Oh, Father, right now, work in the hearts of your people and reveal the infinite greatness of your Son, the Lord Jesus, to us so that our hearts would be gripped again by his unsearchable greatness. And so flowing out of our hearts would be passionate devotion to him. Lord, I pray this in the name of the Father, through the power and provision of the Son, and by the person of the Holy Spirit.